our societies, we don't believe in constraining the media, still less in censorship. Well, Maggie, that wasn't exactly true, was it? When Mrs T was elected in 1979, the country was transformed. She kissed goodbye to the permissive 60s and 70s. Her big thought was privatisation. But ironically, what we did in private came under increased moral scrutiny. In the most private space of all, the family home, a sinister and threatening new device lurked like a toxic monster in the corner. The video cassette recorder. The early 1980s marked a revolution in video technology. For the first time, courtesy of the VCR, people had the means to watch films in the comfort of their own homes. If they had 500 quid and a Pickford's van to get it home. But, surprise, surprise, it wasn't Panorama they were watching. Almost immediately unregulated and uncensored films became available to hire, uncut, from your local video shop. Gory, graphic and gratuitous, these films were flying off the shelves and leaving viewers so traumatised they could barely reach for the eject button. Fake blood, vacant stares and, let's be honest, some pretty shoddy acting became the hallmarks of what the tabloids quickly dubbed the Video Nasty. Well, video Nasties was a term coined by uh, Mary Whitehouse, head of the uh, National Viewers and Listeners Association, and she um, took against a whole bunch of movies that became available in the early 80s on video, at a time when um, things were unlicensed, unrated. There was a, a market for um, all sorts of films because the video recorder was a new piece of kit and people had their machines but they didn't necessarily have the films to, to watch on them. Terrified that children might watch the uncut nasties at home, the government unleashed snatch squads on local video shops. The police have raided many video shops in the past months. In this North London shop, for instance, they took away the so-called nasty videos, but they left behind the cassette boxes. The attached wrappings say simply, not to be seen by those of nervous disposition. The appetite for illicit films increased, and soon the press whipped themselves up into a good old-fashioned tabloid frenzy. The rise in childhood delinquency, the Toxteth riot, everything but Torval and Dean was blamed on video nasties. You know, people who say, but why shouldn't adults be able to see this kind of thing in their own home? I I'm half tempted to say that people who make that kind of demand, knowing that children are likely to see it, aren't really themselves very mature and adult. It's just with Mrs Whitehouse leading the way, Tory MPs joined the crusade, demanding an outright ban, not only to protect the nation's children, but also to save our, uh, dogs. If anyone can stand up and defend the sort of horrific scenes that I have had to see and other members of Parliament have had to see, I believe they're living in a different world to that world that I live in. I believe that uh, research is taking place and it will show that these films not only affect young people, but I believe they affect adults as well. It goes far too far. What about stuff like zombie flesh yeah, and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they're stupid, they're not realistic, <laughs> are they? My mum don't really let me, but I watch them when she's not in. I prefer horror films. Why is that? Because they're more scary, yeah. more threatening and more blood. There were surveys done of school children to see how many of these titles they had actually seen. And one of the, the famous examples included several made-up movie titles. These films did not exist. But over 50% of the kids who were asked said they had seen those movies. My parents sent me to bed early one night because they had a video called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And already, you know, you're a kid, like eight, nine years old, it's like, that sounds brilliant, can I have some of that? They said, no, you must never see this video. We got the Long Good Friday and the Exterminator as our first videos and I wasn't supposed to be allowed to see the Exterminator but obviously I got up really early after my parents were still in bed and I watched it and the, the finale was dropping this man into a mincing machine and he got minced, that was the way he was executed and I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. In 1984, the wave of moral outrage resulted in the government passing the Video Recordings Act which banned a host of films. The Director of Public Prosecution uh, to his shame, I think, 
drew up a list, and this was the last censorship list we had. He drew up a list of 80 films that were so-called video nasties and would be prosecuted uh, come what may. Near the top of the list was the infamous Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The plot was a bit thin. Good-looking kids meet evil family. Lots of big kit from B&Q. Gore, blood and chaos ensues. It was a slam dunk for the new video nasty censors. You see these films and you can't quite work out why they were banned. You don't even see anything in Chainsaw Massacre. The worst bit that you think you see is a woman getting put on a hook on a meat hook, but you don't even see that. It cuts away before you even get to that. And it's, it's the most ungruesome, gruesome film I've ever seen in my life. By 1983, the most infamous of all video nasties had been added to the banned list. Mary Whitehouse called The Evil Dead the number one nasty. It featured more good-looking kids, more unspeakable evil in the woods, and this time, zombies. I fear that the only way to stop those possessed by the spirits of the book is through the act of bodily dismemberment. There are several reasons why a film with the title Evil Dead was going to draw the attention of the censors and the police and the uh, moral watchdogs. Evil and Dead, for a start, is the, is the giveaway, the lurid video cover. Um, and it did become the biggest selling video of 1983. Um, people heard about this film, they wanted to see it, it was something forbidden in a lot of ways. And certainly I remember at the time being a, a school kid in the playground, being a teenager, it was the film you had to have seen that summer. It was all way too much for the boys and girls with the censorship forms. The real fear was that the youth of the day would copy the film's killer scene and become pencil-wielding maniacs. Evil Dead was a case in point where um, a character was stabbed through the uh, ankle with a, a pen or a pencil. Now that is something that can be imitated. It's perfectly possible to, to do that. And the fear was that kids up and down the country would be going to school on Monday morning, having seen Evil Dead, and, and start sticking pencils in people. Um, there's never been any proof that this um, cause and effect relationship actually exists. People aren't inspired, I don't think, by videos or by films or by TV to go off and kill and rape. I think if they're going to if that's in their head, they're going to do it anyway. You know, they're going, to, they're going to go off and kill and rape because there are mental people around and there are nasty people around. Seeing a poorly made film from the 70s or the 80s isn't going to inspire anyone to go and kill anyone. I don't think. I might be wrong. I don't know. Fingers crossed. By the mid-80s, the government had the movie epidemic under control. But thanks to the ban, a host of crude films had gained immortal status. Now, two decades later, they watched more for laughs than frights. It is odd from a perspective of 2004, looking back 20 years to the fuss that went on at the time around video nasties, when today you can walk into HMV and buy most of them on DVD. Um, there has been a change in the culture. We worry more about different things these days. Violence is on a far larger scale in terms of wars and events like September the 11th rather than the personal horror that is in so many of the, the video nasty 